Hello Soweto Kinch, nice to have you here in King's Place Hall 1, which is a hall with a special association for you. Yeah, I'm really excited to be back at King's Place in a space which for me is resonant and got special significance in terms of the evolution of the legend of Mike Smith. Actually, even though I've had the idea for some five or six years and it's been incubating and uh, thinking about these musical concepts, the first time we actually put anything up on the stage in terms of visualising the story of the Seven Deadly Sins was right here in this room. So I involved myself, John T. D., a choreographer, and Ty Tyrone Isaac Stewart, who's an incredible dancer. And we just put up two of the songs, being Gluttony and Envy, to see what would work. The audience response really was really affirming and it kind of continued me in the direction of thinking, how can I turn this album into a full staged concept? So yeah, it's great to be back and to, to feel that the momentum that was started here is still picking up and still growing. The album is the result of a number of important collaborations with people, isn't mm, it? Right? Mm. I really feel privileged at this point in my career and having built up the relationships I have to have, have put this album together with people that I trust. You know, Tony Platt, still the producer that I used since Conversations with the Unseen, somebody gets my sound and concept very quickly and always tremendously encouraging. But to have somebody with that much knowledge that breadth of experience, having mixed everything from ACDC to Bob Marley and have that condensed on, on my album is a real privileged privilege. And to have the artists as well, you know, Esco, who's a long-time collaborator, Cleveland Watkiss, Julian Joseph, musicians that I've always looked up to from afar, and to have them be participants in the uh, exploration of Vice was a lot of fun. Um, and not to mention, you know, the core trio that it, and it was extended with Shabaka Hutchings, who's a really close friend and understands you know, conceptually where I'm coming from, both in musical and philosophical terms. And it's very rare that you get an assortment of people from the musicians to the actors, to the, you know, the involvement of John Z. D. as a director, the, the whole team that kind of gets the philosophical as well as the artistic approach of what, what this album's about. So there are a lot of tracks on this album. Uh, in fact, over 40 tracks. And we're just going to talk about a couple of them now. Um, it's really hard for me to pick out standalone tracks, generally speaking. Like, uh, particularly with this album, it's an, an overall concept. Um, but, you know, you can extrapolate things and have favourite little moments. And for me, one of them is Traffic Lights. I just think the energy... I had this really gritty beat for ages. I played it to Eska maybe about seven, seven years ago. Yeah, cool. Kind of left it there in storage. And it just seemed perfect to bring it out and what she added to it, as well as the tenor, as well as me really getting a chance to flex on tenor saxophone, makes it one of my favourite tracks. It's gritty and kind of epitomises the darker but funkier edge of this album compared to others. <laughs> One of the most exciting and yet taxing tunes to write for was NVIDIA, or Envy. And just the concept of it is, is quite interesting. As a sin, I think it's the only of the seven that we're very really embarrassed about having. But we don't want anyone to know that we have secret shadow for the desire to see somebody else fail and we feel slightly inadequate around someone else. So that was interesting. And getting inside the frenetic pace as well and technically pushing myself as a lyricist was something that I really enjoyed on NVIDIA particularly. And we got to shoot this video in an abandoned asylum, which was highly guerrilla tactics. We just rolled up in there with the cameras and it's a lot of fun to have captured Tyrone and his incredible choreography and his movements and, and what I'm doing lyrically was just a real privilege again. You know. And this is a project which really appeals to crowds as well. You were in Ronnie Scott's last night and the night before people were up and dancing. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to see people on a Monday night and Tuesday night at two sold out shows at Ronnie's dancing, you know, on the encore numbers and really letting loose. So turning perceptions about what a jazz gig is on its head a little bit and also what a hip hop gig is. I mean, there were, there were people pensive and reflective listening to jazz ballads but then shaking about and, and having fun with the dance end of the hip-hop material. So um, it's always tremendously interesting to me. And I think particularly with The Legend of Mike Smith, 
we've got a malleable enough concept to be doing hip hop festivals, to do late night clubs, to do theatrical, full theatrical things as, as is the intention. And of course, more conventional jazz gigs. So again, I'm really privileged to be at a point where creatively we've got enough in our musical arsenal to just play music and let people make their own minds up about, about these ideas. Yeah, we're here in Hall 1 of King's Place on the 31st of May. Um, it's part of the festival called The Time and the Place. And interestingly, it's kind of part of a Europe-wide consultation and discussion with musicians and academics about how art and jazz, music particularly, has evolved on the continent for millennia. So it's this really, really big field of discussion and my part in it is looking at scarcity. And there's a theatre show coming up in Birmingham Rep later in the year in September. Oh, yes. Well, as a Birmingham native, it's always been um, a source of pride, but also a desire of mine to really do more with the institutions that are there in my city. And the Rep, as part of their reopening, I'm really, really excited to say, have announced The Legend of Mike Smith, the full theatrical piece, as their signature flag flagship opening project. So opening this new studio space will be my new theatre piece in a new theatre. It couldn't get much better. And in my home city, you know. So lots of things coming together with that. And I'm looking forward to the dedicated time. I've already met with, you know, producers and directors there and, and John Z D as well as the key director in this process to talk about how we can take what we did at the Albany and here at King's Place to the next level really. And I'm, I'm really, really excited about what the future holds there. <laughs>